Game On. Okay, I got this off eBay. I think I want to say, I want to say about two years ago, and I think I actually got it from Europe. Um, I can't remember exactly where. I'm pretty sure it was from Europe, uh, England, as a matter of fact. And I think I paid 30 bucks for it uh, shipped, which was really not bad at all. So what this is is, it's actually a tabletop recreation of the Japanese version of Space Invaders. Um, it does play. It plays with a static LCD screen. But what's cool about it, it's also a bank. It takes actual coins in here. We'll see that more when we get it out of the box. But the box itself is actually pretty nice. Let's turn to the side here and we can see uh, what it looks like. It's a good recreation of the uh, the arcade unit with the left and right joystick and the fire button. And you can see the screen is here, but it's not a color LCD or the arcade ROM. It's just a static screen version of the game. Still not bad for what it is. And I have to admit, I've been fighting for these past two years not to convert this into a Raspberry Pi unit to play the arcade ROM because it's a nice collectible as it is. If I ever found another one without the box, something like that, maybe I'll do it to that one. But this one I'm trying to keep stock, although I, I admit I keep getting pulled to the dark side wanting to convert this into a Raspberry Pi with the arcade ROM. And I can't read Japanese obviously, so I can't say what it's talking about here. But I'm assuming it's saying that, hey, it's a nice little version of Space Invaders that actually plays and it's a bank. You can see here, they are putting in coins. And a fun fact, if you didn't know, when Space Raiders did come out in the arcades in Japan, it actually caused a coin shortage. There were so many Space Invader machines out there that they actually had to print more coins. And eventually, they had to pass a law, I guess, something about not letting the arcades be open during certain hours during the week, because kids were skipping school as well to play Space Invaders. And they actually became Space Invaders uh, bars and Space Invaders uh, coffee houses because they had so many of these machines to play this particular game. It really was one of the first mega hits uh, of the arcade uh, industry. And if we take a look at the box, I and mean, the box that was really, really nice, you see on the top here, it's a little dark, it's kind of hard to see inside, so we'll get it out of the box. But if you could see it a little bit better, you could see a good outline of the, uh, of the machine. But let's get this out of the box and actually take a good look at the machine here. I'll see if it's something on the bottom, didn't really notice that before. Just shows uh, the machine how it played. Now, this particular machine, I can't remember if it had controls on both sides because in the arcade, that's how it was for one player and two player, were each on uh, opposite sides of the of the machine. Let's get the sucker out of the box as gentle as I can because obviously this is I don't want to say super rare, but it's rare for me. It took me a long time to find one of these, and uh, let's get some, here we go. Okay, pull one side panel off. Get that out of the way. Then the machine looks like it'll simply come right out. And it does. Put that aside. So we can see here, it's a really good recreation of the machine. The legs, uh, the coin stored down here. It's a pretty good feeling joystick. I mean, it's got a good reaction. The button, coin slot there. Here's our side profile, where they actually do have the actual emblem they had in the arcade machine to describe the machine and its serial number. But on the other side, alas, there's no two player controls on this side. That's okay. It's just a little kid's toy for the most part. It's a bank. And that's it. Now the top looks like it needs to be cleaned a little bit. I could clean that a little bit later. There's the top of the machine. You can see it's got a screen here, which I could put a Raspberry Pi in, but I'm going to try really, really not to do that. But it does need to be cleaned. And you can see it's got the how to play the game again in, in Japanese because it's the Japanese machine, but I can't read Japanese, so I have no idea what that's really saying. And if I'm not mistaken, here there are there are actually uh, two screws 
It's hard to see with the legs. These legs pop off. See, they just come right off just like this. And there's a screw here and a screw here. And you have to unscrew it to get this off. The coins, when you put the coins in, stay inside the bank. And you have to unscrew this, and this slides right off to get the coins out. I do wish, this is just plastic. I kind of wish it was metal. Only because it feels like if anything's going to break, it would be, it would be this. And actually, you know what? I have to take this off anyway because to put batteries in there to try this, I'm going to have to put batteries, and the batteries go underneath the coin door. So give me a second to find some batteries, and uh, we can fire this game up and give it a shot. Okay, so we got our trusty uh, Phillips head screwdriver here. So we're going to put it in here, and I think these are even on springs. I don't think they... Yeah, they are. Oh, ah! These are on a spring, and it flew out! Oh, my God! Yeah, okay, so... Yeah, they put the uh, the screw here on a spring, but no lock for it. So it just kind of flies out on you. So that's not so good. Um, so we'll be a little more careful taking out this other one here on this side. So it doesn't spring out and lose it like I just did with that one. Be very careful. Okay, I think the screw is out. There we go. Oh, oh, oh. He's got to turn a little bit more. You see, this one looks like it's staying in the right way. The other one flew out. Um, looks like that one's not. Okay, that one's staying in. So that's how I thought they were on both sides, but it wasn't the case. So I'm going to slide this off. And yeah, see, there's a stopper. Puts down for a second. There's a little stopper in there, if you could see it. So the screw didn't fly out like that other one just did. I'm sure I could find a wash here and fix that one. But in any case, this is where your coins are going to deposit into in here. And here is our, our battery door. So we're going to... And you can see right here, when you put the coin in, it's going to come out here and deposit into the tray. And uh, I want to think this uses AAA batteries. Let's. I hope this thing doesn't fly off like the other one. Let's see. Actually uses double A's. So I'm gonna get three double A batteries and we'll pop these in and give this game a try. Okay, I always try to be a little environmentally conscious. So I use these really nice any loop uh, rechargeable batteries. These things are great. Uh, so I'm gonna put these in here. It just takes three. So it's a little weird. They all face the same direction, which usually you go one one way, one the, uh, you know, swap your batteries back and forth. But in this one, they all go in the same way, which is, you know, it's fine. So we put them in, and we're going to put our battery door uh, back on here, and screw it in. And I'm going to put the coin door back on, but I'm not going to screw it in just now. And I'm actually going to, so I don't lose it, I'm going to put this loose screw in there. Because you see they're slotted, so I can just slide this in, and it's going to stay in place, like so. Oh. And it turns on automatically, I guess. I don't know if you can see that too well with the uh, lighting. Let's see if I can... Okay, let's put this in here. Like so, gotta be careful. So that's what it's gonna look like. And let's get a better angle on this so we can see the game a little bit better. Okay, so if you press the fire button, you can see the game does turn on. And it doesn't look too, too bad. Again, the screen has to be cleaned up to disassemble this whole thing so I can get this lines out of here. But it is backlit. And for a static screen, it did a pretty good job. You only see the two alien types here. You see, you know, the small top aliens with that fire button. And the middle ones. But as you progress down, the third alien will appear towards the bunkers. So I don't think I can start the game, no matter what I do. I need a coin. So let me get myself a quarter and we can try this game out. Okay, when you don't have instructions, you kind of learn things as you go. One thing I learned is when your machine is on, let's say, and you open up this coin door, it puts the game in reset mode. So there's no way to cheat and put coins in, I guess, without uh, putting a coin in. You can always get coins out of here to put it back in the machine. So that's really silly. But I was able to locate the other uh, spring lock. It was actually on the screw itself, but at the bottom. So I was able to fix uh, both screws. So... When you put this in, it's going to put, there's a like a little lever 
uh, it's a red lever right down there that I guess detects when you put this in and it will turn the machine on like so and if you put anything in other than a quarter it takes it but it won't let you play a game at least in American currency so here is a coin slot I'm gonna put a nickel in it didn't register the coin it took the coin but it didn't do anything now I have a couple of quarters here so I'm gonna put a quarter in it's like the old days you put a quarter so I'm gonna play it twice we're gonna start the game up here I put a coin in you'll hear it register the coin and down here it's actually flashing one credit and the game uh, when you press the fire button should start and it did Now the marching sound does sound a little bit on the slow side, uh, and it looks like I'm missing a lot of these aliens, man. Oh, but I got hit just fine. And the bunker is actually broken up into different parts, so as they're hit, they will disappear slowly. Man, I'm really missing a lot here. So see, you can see now the third alien, the bottom alien, has now appeared as you got close to the bottom of the screen. Again, the joysticks and the button feel fairly good. It's just that, man, I just don't seem to be hitting anyone. I'm in trouble. This is not going to be an easy game as I thought it was going to be. It looks like they only march as low as the bunkers, so they won't be hitting the ground, so there's no way to lose the game that way, unless that just happened anyway. It looks like they did. The game simply went back. Oh, no. I must have been hit. No, it is game over. So it must march once or twice at the bottom of the screen, and then they consider that hitting the ground. And uh, now it's saying insert coin. So no matter what I'm doing, it's not letting me play the game. So I'm going to try one more time here. I'm going to put a coin in the machine. Again, this is kind of the first time I fired this thing up since I had it. It did register one coin. You can see it flashing at the bottom. Right, right there. And we'll start up another game. I wonder if I shoot my bunker, it'll go away. Yep, you can see my bunker slowly disappearing. Now I have no bunker there. So I do think for a little bank, I mean, it's not bad. It actually is, you know, better than lots of other versions of Space Marines that came home. They are using the right aliens, the right sound effects. Sounds a little bit on the slow side, but again, it's so hard to hit these guys. I can understand why it plays a little bit on the slow side. But again, I'm also playing this through a camera viewfinder. I always use that excuse, but it's true. Oh, I got the aliens. The UFO, nice. So there are the lower aliens. I guess once it goes down to the bunkers twice, it considers it a game over. So let's try and get rid of them. See, I'm pressing the fire button like crazy just to hit somebody. Oh, there are those aliens again. So once the lower ones are here, two times and I'm done. Uh oh, I still got one. Ah! I gotta get him. Oh, I'm in trouble. 
not shooting, shoot! Oh yeah, I'm done. So it's it's <laughs> it's fun, it's a little nerve-wracking, but it's really not bad. Um again, this was made years ago. I can't even tell you when it was actually made. Um but it's really a nice little unit. It's a nice little bank. And you see my, my cord is actually stuck there. So if I slide this thing out, we'll take another coin. You can see it, it came through. So not a bad little guy if you could find one of these little devils. Um, again, you can always convert these into a Raspberry Pi unit. Man, my heart tells me to do it. But actually my brain's telling me to do it. My heart's telling me not to do it. I'll leave it as is. Um, but I really do like this little guy. Um, it's kind of fun when you have a bank that you can actually play and uh, save as you go, which is kind of nice. So I thank you guys for watching this little quick little episode of this little tabletop uh, Space Invaders. Um, thanks for watching. Want to remember, if you liked the video, please like, share, subscribe, tell your friends, and remember, game on. the arcade fan page. Remember, don't admire people too much. They'll disappoint you. Sit, blue, blue, sit. Good dog. <laughs> <laughs>